I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Dave. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. On the day that we're recording this, it is um, the last day of January, which yes feels like the like 74th day of January. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I am happy because we are just inching closer to my springtime weather. Um, so I'm and, and I'm glad... I'm glad for you that we're inching closer to your springtime weather. Yes. I'm also glad that I'm inching closer to a week's vacation. Yeah, we we both are inching towards our vacations. You'll yeah. you'll get there before I do, but you're will, you're only so. about what two and a half weeks out? Two weeks. Out? Nineteen days. Yeah. Not that I'm counting. No, no, of course not. We never <laughs> count down to vacation. You know, and I have to say that um, I I was actually uh, sitting with with a doctor this morning and. We both said we love what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we really don't have any desire to think about, of course, he's 55, I'm 56, to think about retirement, those type of things. We just love what we do. Mm-hmm. However, that doesn't mean I don't love going and spending time with my wife someplace tropical. So, yes. anyways. Yes, I, I, I am totally looking forward agree. to that. And it's always good to, ha- to have some time to unplug. I hope you don't mind me sharing that you're going on a cruise. Not at all. So, you will be up. Uh, you know, pretty unplugged. It's hard to yes. it's hard to be plugged in while you're on a cruise. So that's right. Now we are still trying to figure out: is there a way that I can record this with you from the cruise ship? I'm not sure. We'll. I have to look into that. We'll see. Might- because there's a value in it. Yes. You know, there's a value in resting. There's a value in vacationing, and I think that would be a nice way to um to hit that point. Mm-hmm. However, we'll see. We'll see. What <laughs> yeah. happens. It, it might end up being a monologue or something. I don't know. The, with the ocean in the background. Yeah, with the, with the waves breaking off the hull of the ship, right? That, so. That'll be a nice refresher instead of having me in the background. <laughs> have the, yeah, right. Have the waves in the background. It would be a very, very, very short podcast. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. Anyways, yeah. So this week. Yeah, we're talking about level two um, of John Maxwell's five levels of leadership. This is our uh, second episode of a five-episode series. Yep. So if you missed level one, go back a week and catch up. Right. Um, and please send in a note from your parent or doctor as to why you missed the class. <laughs> yes. Valid reason. And uh, so the second level is permission. Right. Can you give us a quick description of what that level looks like? Sure. So we, we know that level one was position. Um, and level, and that is that you have been given a title, you've been given a position, so now, quote unquote, you're the boss. Mm-hmm. The problem is too many of us act like the boss and don't ask like a leader. So that's the entry level to leadership. You've been given a seat at the table, but now you have to do something with it and you need to move quickly or you, will, you won't get the best from your people. So then the next level is permission. And at this level, believe it or not, people are starting to like you. Um, you don't have to tell them that you're the boss. They like working with you. They like being around you. And you are really establishing relationships with the people that are on your team. They, they look to you as a, um, as a resource and as a friend and someone that truly is interested in them. And it's, it's interesting. A couple of the things that leaders, permissional level leaders do well is they listen well. So in, in my, my post that I sent out this morning, um, I referenced Dr. Stephen Covey's in his seven habits of highly effective people. He's, you know, one of his habits was seek first to understand, then to be understood. And, and that really is a great motto of a permission level leader. They're listening with an intent to understand, not respond. So I know um, for level one, you had kind of like a checklist of, or a list of questions to help figure out you know, if this is where you are um, yes. or if you've mastered it or whatever. So do you have one of those for this level? I do. And, it, and it's found, in, again, in John's book, um, The Five Levels of Leadership. And, and in last week's uh, podcast show notes, I did put a link, an Amazon link, where people can buy the book. Oh, great. Um, so you need to answer yes to eight or more of these 10 questions to know if you are at level two. And those points are, people outside of my department or area of responsibility respect my opinions and frequently seek me out for advice. Hmm. So that's the first one. 
I know my strengths and my weaknesses, and I rarely get blindsided in my work. That's number two. Number three, I genuinely like most people and want to help them. And I want to pause here for a moment because, um, you know, the reality is that, as, and I think it was Dave Ramsey that said at our, at our Live to Lead broadcast, you have to choose to love the people that you lead. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like them all, but you have to choose to love them. Yep. And, and I just know that the more you determine in your heart to love people, you will naturally begin to find something likable about them. Um, number four, I am very consistent and even-tempered in my interaction with the people who work for me. Number five, when I say something to the people on my team, they always know that they can count on it because I am trustworthy. Number six, I have developed solid relationships with all of the people who work for me. I think the key there is all oh, the people mm -hmm. that work for me, not just the ones we like. The people who work with me find me likable and pleasant nearly 100% of the time. Wow. Well, that's a high standard. Mm -hmm. When I need to have a candid conversation with team members to correct errors or take care of problems, I follow through and don't allow too much time to go by. That's a key one, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Uh, number nine, I believe that employees desire more than just a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, and most desire encouragement, and I give it to them. And lastly, I have developed relationships with everyone who works for me. Wow. And, and that's a great list. Mm -hmm. and, and when I think back, and a lot of times as I'm, as I'm studying these topics and thinking about it, I go back to my years managing people, and boy, there were so many years when that wasn't the case. And now I, that explains why. I've struggled at times mm -hmm. with my leadership because I didn't treat everyone the same and I didn't seek to establish relationships with everybody. Yep. So I'm Sorry, I was drinking some tea. There. <laughs> it's okay. So, I mean, you know, there are a lot of upsides to this level, obviously, but yeah. you know, we all know we're only at level 2 here, so while that does all those things that you just listed on your checklist would all sound really awesome. Um, it's amazing that there's still three more levels above that. Right. Um, but we're going to focus on this one today. We're going to focus on the permission level. So there are a lot of upsides to, to this level, right? I mean, sure. it sounds like yes. the person would be enjoyable to work with, um, you know, the, their, Forming relations, relationships with people, people like them, which is good for morale, um, things like mm -hmm. that. What else could you expect to see as a positive of this level? The, the, the energy level is much higher on mm -hmm. a team with a permissional leader because people aren't working because they have to. They're working because they want to. Mm -hmm. and, and these teams enjoy being together. Um, the relationship that the leader has built with, his t with each one of his team members helps the team members build relationships with each other. So they really have fun. Mm -hmm. They're enjoying it. I remember a couple times uh, in my career, uh, in my last job, where one of my departments was just excelling. They, they, were, they were blowing the rates right out of the water on productivity. And I remember uh, one time calling them in because I would have these little gift cards that I would give them, you know, as a, just a, an unexpected kind of reward. So I called all the team members in and I was handing out these little gift cards. And I said, so tell me, what's happening? What's different? And one of the guys just said, you know, Dave, all I can say is we're having fun. Mm -hmm. And when a team has fun, they're productive. They're engaged. They're happy. You know, they, they come into work. Now, again, a lot of us, most of us, almost all of us would rather go fishing than go to work. But if you got to go, enjoy it. Look forward mm -hmm. to it every morning when you get up. And I could tell they were having fun. So that's one of the pluses. Yep. Um, another one is that there, the leader shifts from me to we. That's one of John's phrases. And then if you think about it, leadership typically is, people view leadership as top down. But when you get to the permission level, leadership is side by side. It's not people directing people. It's people working together toward a common cause. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why they have so much fun with it. Um, one of the things that struck me in, in the book, and, and I need to 
I need to find a way to get a copy of this symbol. But the Chinese symbol for the verb listen is actually a symbol that's made up of four other smaller symbols. And those symbols um, refer to the ears, I hear what you say, the eyes, I see what you say, the heart, I feel what you say, and undivided attention, I value who you are and what you say. And that just, that really struck me. I was, I was thinking about it last evening and I shared it with my wife. I mean, what an amazing word that, you know, these, and I think the, John has it in the book and the pronunciation, I guess, for this symbol is ting, which means listen. It's a verb for listen. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's more than just, you know, when we think of listen, okay, did I listen? Did I hear? Did, no, right. That's not what it means. It's did I really listen with a desire to truly understand where this person's coming from? Mm-hmm. And when, well, and, you know, the, I, I feel what you say, like listening with your heart too. Yes, like that. right. Yeah. Stronger relationship, compassion, yeah. things like that. You know, and a lot of times people think that um, to feel means I have to agree with them. That's not at all the case. Empathy doesn't, it means you need to have empathy. Mm-hmm. And empathy doesn't mean that I agree with what you're saying. It's I'm empathizing with the position you're in. Yep. If, you know, if, if you're in a, for instance, if I have to terminate a person, and, and thankfully that's not something that, I even think about much these days, um, is I can truly empathize with the fact that the person that I'm going to let go, this is going to mess up their life. Mm-hmm. And I can, I can really feel badly for them. That doesn't change the fact that for whatever reason, their behavior has caused them to terminate their relationship with the organization. So I, that's, I kind of use that example for people. And it doesn't mean that I agree with you. It means I can understand the hurt or where this is coming from. Yep. And that's huge. People, you know, leaders need to be empathetic. They, they really do. Um, another thing that, um, that I put in my post was that level two leaders have learned to observe things. Mm-hmm. And I struggled with that. I was a person, I am a person, I'm, I'm frequently in a hurry. I just, I, I can't wait to get to my next appointment, whatever it is, and I just need to fill my day with more things than are humanly possible. Uh, But I remember one of my first encounters with John Maxwell and when he said, you need to walk slowly through the crowd. And I realized that that was something I was doing very, very poorly um, wherever I went. You know, if I went to church, man, I'm walking in a hurry. If I, I have a, 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 all of my boys are bigger than me, a lot bigger than me. You you know them. They're Mm -hmm. much taller than I am. My son-in-law's much taller than I am as well. So they all have longer legs, but they have trouble keeping up with me in a store. And, and my son-in-law, Andrew, one time commented about the fact that, you know, if he goes to Home Depot with me, you know, it's like, hold on, because dad's on a mission. <laughs> yeah. Which is great if you want to get things done, but lousy if you want to see what's happening all around you. I have the same, so it, same problem. Yeah. So in my old office, um, I put a note on a... Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, I wrote, slow down. And I taped it to the side light on the door next to my old office. So every time I went around that corner out my door, I would consciously think about, slow down. Take time to look people in the eye. Take time to see what people are doing. Take time to, to look at them long enough to read an emotion. Mm-hmm. That's what permission level leaders do, and they do it really well. Did your, um, this might be slightly off topic, but did your note at, by the door, did that help you? Yes, it did. Mm-hmm. I, it literally, because, oh, okay, so slow down. And, and I did. I slowed down. Mm-hmm. You just need those reminders till we build new neural pathways and, and change our habits. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I, I experienced this over the weekend. Um, I typically my, my husband and I take our daughter, like if we go out, we, we both go and we take her together. And so it, it's really easy because there's one of her and two of us. And so even if like he needs to take the slow route around Wegmans and just keep her happy, you know, find the goldfish yep. aisle and mm-hmm. look at the lobsters and all that. Um, Love the goldfish. Yes. I can still, you know, power through my shopping or, or do whatever sure. I have to do. Uh, but over this past weekend, my husband needed to do some painting because everyone knows we're listing our house. And so uh, we wanted to get 
get Isla out, um, just, you know, because she'd want to be in the same room as him and just be a mess. So I took her to the zoo by myself. And mm. um, it's, it's just funny because I rarely take her places alone just because we, we do everything together. Um, and it forced me to, like, just completely slow down and en- enjoy things, like, through her eyes, which obviously sure. <laughs> she moves at a much slower pace. Right. Um, than, That's great. than I do. And by the time we got home, normally I'd be like, oh, my gosh, I've wasted so much time because we moved so slow and we stopped at all the things and we and we had to see all the people and all the animals and whatever. But it was refreshing to see, yeah. some, you know, through through her eyes and to be able to notice other people. Whereas if I was there, to, you know, doing something by myself, I'd look at slow the slow walkers. You know, I think there's right. like a, right. a Seinfeld episode about this. Um, and like they're, they're obstacles to me achieving what I want, (laughs) but, but this allowed me to slow down and think about like, wow, look at how much fun that other family is having or how nice that grandma and grandpa joined that family at the zoo today and they're all getting some fresh air together. Um, so it it was an interesting shift of perspective. It is. You know, when we rush, rush through life, not only do we miss what's going on with our team, but we miss out on blessings mm-hmm. that are all around us. Mm-hmm. These, these wonders that, that fill our lives that we just pass by. Yeah. They're, they're, and, and, and we end up losing. We might think we gained because we got an extra hour's worth of work in, but we lost plenty. Mm-hmm. So by now, people probably are thinking, wow, this has got to be the best to be a level two permissional leader. No, it's not. So there are downsides. Um, a lot of people see us as being soft, especially high achievers. Mm-hmm. They get really frustrated with level two leaders because they, you know, are more interested in how people feel. Um, they're more interested in making sure the team is getting along well. So those high achievers really get frustrated. And if we're not careful, we could lose them. So would it be fair to say that, that these permission level leaders maybe they're they're looking for validation from their whole team and kind of want want the popular vote on all decisions and are maybe afraid to act outside of that because they don't want to lose those relationships is that yeah yeah I, I think yes i think it's accurate and i think what happens is because they they realize that relationship is key to being able to lead because really relationships is one of the fundamental building blocks of leadership if you don't have a relationship, you can't lead. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 one of the um, one of the drawbacks then is that that leader focuses so much on the relationship that they have difficulty when it comes time to critiquing mm-hmm. or challenging um, a person, and and they they view it as well. I don't want to hurt their feelings because they need to like me. No, they need to respect you. They don't need to like you all the time. And, you know, so if we think about it, we don't need to like all of our team members. We need to love them. Mm-hmm. The team members don't need to like us all the time. They need to respect us mm-hmm. and value us. I don't want to say they need to love us. It'd be nice if they did. But the reality is that, you know, they just need to be able to respect who we are as someone who's been assigned to care for them in essence. Uh, I so think this is the fun sign- parent. The permission leader is the yeah. fun parent. <laughs> the fun parent. Right. Um and I think Simon Sinek said it this way. He said, it's not that you're in charge of people. You have people in your charge. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a tremendously different thing. Um, the other thing, that, the other downside is to permissional leadership is you really do have to focus on the whole person when you're dealing with your team member. It's not just their performance. Mm-hmm. You realize that their performance is affected by things outside of work that you may not be aware of at the moment. So there are some ways for us to, to gain. So let's say you're, you're looking at the, the list, the 10 questions, and you're only at five or six, and you need to get to work your way to eight. So there are some things that, um, that I picked out of the book as well that someone can do to really strengthen their permissional level leadership and move them toward the next phase, which is production. The first one is really to connect with yourself. Self-awareness is key in everything. Um, it's, if, if I could help people with you know there's two things that i think are critical for people and you always know i'm going to go with are you growing daily Mm -hmm. but self-awareness is that twin to are you growing daily 
are you aware of how you're coming across? Are you aware of what your tendencies are? I know that one of my greatest weaknesses as a leader has been that I do not confront conflict quick enough. It's based on my behavioral profile. Mm-hmm. But if I know it, I can do something about it. Um, the, the second thing you can do is really develop a people-oriented leadership style. You know, it's not me, it's we. And always think of the team as a we. Um, don't give them decisions. Develop decisions with them. Mm-hmm. And, and that's different, you know. And look for, look for multiple right answers, not your own right answer. Um, practice the golden rule. You know, that just, it, it's, and it's interesting. If you look in, if you look in the book, uh, and I forgot what page it's on now, but John actually goes through all of the major religions of the world, and all of them have something similar to what we refer to as the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. It's just, it's that simple. Right. You just have to be nice. You and I were talking before mm-hmm. the podcast started recording. You know, I know it's somewhat cynical, but I agree with you. Where have all the nice people gone? Yep. You know, so we just need to be nice. Um, and I love this one. And I kind of changed it around a little bit. I used the term, the, 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 the letter CEO, become a chief encouragement officer. John phrased it a little differently. Mm-hmm. But, you know, everybody wants to be the CEO. Well, they should. Cause, and, and it was interesting, and I forgot who John was asking this question. He shared it once in a, in a training. You know, he wanted to know who needed to be encouraged. And whoever it was that was talking, how do I know who needs to be encouraged? And whoever he was talking to, might have been his dad once, said, here's the tip, John. If they're breathing, they need to be encouraged. Yep. Because if they're not, okay, move on. Um, another key thing for us to have to work on here is our balance between care and candor. Care establishes a relationship, but candor expands it. So can we speak candidly with people? Do, they, do we have enough of a relationship with them? We can say, can I share something with you? Mm-hmm. I'm concerned about this and this and this. Right. Uh, c- caring defines a relationship. Candor directs the relationship. And so I, I think that's really important that we have to get to a point where we can speak the truth, but in love. Right. Right. I mean, it's important when you have a relationship with someone that you know, I would hope that if I had some, if you, you know, something I, I was doing that I may not notice, I would hope that you would bring it up to me and say, hey, you know, I care about you. And so I want you to know yeah. that, you know, you come off as harsh in meetings or, right. or something like right. that because you genuinely care and you, and you want to see me succeed and flourish. Exactly. And the other thing that I think every leader needs to do is to have someone or find a way of doing a 360 assessment on mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, get your feedback from your direct reports. Get your feedback from people that just interact with you. Uh, you know, for me, that was, that was something that I did um, toward the end of my career. It's self-lock. I wish I would have done it earlier. It would have shown me some things that I needed to change. Um, I, you know, I did it when I came here, when I was here about 11 months. Just send out a questionnaire and have them come back anonymously. Mm-hmm. Because all of us have some type of career limiting behavior that we're not aware of. Yep. All right. So also, the the other thing I wanted to just real quickly touch on. I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, but it's okay. You, you know, we do our twenty one laws training here at, at um, MACME for our individual members as a as a complimentary offering for our individual members. Um, and and I really want to encourage people. If you're not an individual member, you should become one just for that complimentary training. And um, only John Maxwell team members who are in the executive director level can give you training on the 21 laws. So that's something, if somebody else is doing it, the question I would ask is, have they been trained by John to do it? So anyways, a little shameless plug for Maxwell's <laughs> 21 laws training. But so the laws that fit into level two is number two, the law of influence. Number five, the law of addition. Number six, the law of solid ground. Number nine, the law of magnetism. Number 14, the law of buy-in. And number 10, the law of connection. So those, if you have that book, look at those laws. And those ones, those will be the ones that help solidify permission 
and help you move to the next one that we're going to talk about, which is production. Right. So I don't even have to ask you what we're talking about next week. You don't. Because I know. We're going to talk. Yeah, we're going to talk about level three, which is production, which it really starts to get exciting. Um, but it really, for me as a person that was, you know, in the position of leadership for 30 some years, it was somewhat convicting mm-hmm. that I really was a bad leader. Mm-hmm. So huh? Can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, and again, our goal is to go through all five of these. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, and we're, I think you mentioned last week that that would take us well into or through. Through February. February. Yep. Okay. Yep. By then the crocuses will start coming up through the snow. I will be so happy. I can't wait. So also I will, I will let folks know that because um, I shared my crisis with my fish over Christmas. Oh, yeah. So I have restarted my aquarium again. Oh, good. I don't, I don't have my prize fish yet but because it takes a while for the tank to settle in and mm-hmm. start cycling. But, mm-hmm. but anyways, I started it back up. So That's awesome. Well, I don't know if everybody thinks that. My wife might say, you did what again? Well, I'm just oh, happy she... for you because I know that was, that Thank was you. hard. It was. Mm-hmm. It's hard to believe that you could get so attached to fish. I know. So, Your little buddies. And, and my, wife, my wife does support it. So. <laughs> so, it's easier than a dog. Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I can attest to that. So and anything coming up exciting for you this weekend? Um, we're planning to go to New York City. I'm going to meet mm. my, uh, my nephew that was born on Christmas Day. Awesome. Yeah. It'll be fun. You're going east, I'm going west. Yes, where are you going? California? So I am, I am flying to San Diego Friday evening. Uh, I have the privilege of, of um, meeting with young people to in two different sessions on Saturday and then uh, a Sunday morning session with a, this is with a church that I'm associated with, mm-hmm. our church denomination. And so Sunday morning doing, spending the morning in the church and then Sunday evening fl- taking the red eye back. So wow. people say, oh, great, you're going to San Diego. Go to the beach. No, I'm going to get There's to no the There's no time. <laughs> Dropped off at the airport, but still. I'm, I'm excited about going out and having a chance to spend some time with some young folks. Awesome. Young people. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm-hmm.